So last night was LeBron's 1500th career regular season game. But what was it that AD said, Perk, that the Lakers, they typically lose big milestone games for LeBron? Yeah, Unfortunately, some like <laughs> that trend would continue, particularly with AD on the bench as they face the Memphis Grizzlies here. Oh, too small, too small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Morant was making his free throws. The Grizzlies up here in too the small, next Lakers it. possession. Yeah, right. Now it's LeBron's <laughs> turn to uh, oh. give a little bit of the um, too small. First, he had to complain to the ref, and then too small. <laughs> yeah, you got to it, though, eventually. Morant drives, hits the bank shot for two, and then gives LeBron a little shove at the uh, end of the play there. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Oh, you see how LeBron <laughs> targets that? Who it is? Yeah. <laughs> Morant was uh, Next Wednesday on ESPN, the rematch. Lines. Yep, Next third Wednesday. quarter here. LeBron gets the ball at the top of the key, drills the three-pointer. The Lakers trail by five at this point. LeBron, as many points as he is years on the earth. Ooh. 39. Volleyball. Seven rebounds, six assists. Smack that. Morant all over the court here. And then Jake LaRavia up oh. to Morant, unable Gary. to finish it. Goes down hard on this play, an awkward fall for the Grizzlies superstar. Morant would leave the game. He didn't return, but the Grizzlies would go on to win it. And Ja felt some type of way about this, right? What is it about this Lakers team? It always... I don't like them. They knocked me out of the playoffs. And then last last year, we you know had a game, and they came in here and popped it on our home floor when I was in street clothes. So I wasn't a night. Sometimes it's just that straightforward. The Lakers defense, though, has been at the bottom of the league in efficiency, field goal percentage, paint points, and fast break points on this road trip. That is a long laundry list of issues. I think we need to get Detective Perk on the Lakers case. I'm Kendrick Perkins, better known as Big Perk, and nothing gets past me. Freeze! Just when you thought it did get past me, there I am. I spy a problem. I spy it all. Tear the hell off. Oh, the Lakers been getting stomped out lately. And look, we saw J.J. Reddick working on this network, ESPN, defending players a lot of times. We saw him take the Lakers' job, and then all of a sudden we see him in the videos playing and practice with the players. But the players on his roster think something sweet about J.J. I think LeBron was fantastic tonight. Um, I mean, the biggest thing that stood out, I mean, I, I had no idea he had 39 until I'm not looking at the box scores during the game, but, you know, he uh, played hard, almost 40 years old, played the hardest on our team. It says a lot about him. D'Lo only played um, 21 minutes tonight. Um, what did you see there? Uh, why did you make the decision in the second half to go away from him? Uh, again, just you know, level of compete, attention to detail, you know, some of the things we, you know, talked have talked with him about for a couple of weeks and, at times he's he's been really good uh, with that stuff, and other times you know it's it's just reverting back to certain habits. But uh, you know, it wasn't like a punishment. It just felt like you know for us to have a chance to win this game. It was that was the route we wanted to take. Well, if you know like I know, is nothing sweet about J.J. Redick, and we finally seeing the other side of him, especially his players. Did you hear those post-game remarks? But he was absolutely right, especially when it comes down to D'Angelo Russell. Look at this effort defensively, and look at him. Who are you looking at? This is consecutive plays right here. Then he comes down. This is a slap in the face to the coaching staff when a guy plays basketball like this. I want you to watch this possession right here. Lackadaisical, I don't care. I think I'm at the park and one type of moves. Look at it, just look at it. Look at it. Step back, gets his shot blocked. Now look at his effort getting back on defense, okay? He has the ball now. He has the ball. I want you to watch him again. I'm not picking on him, but the eye in the sky don't lie. Look at the effort, give up the drive, Three. After that, J.J. Reddick said, you know what, I had, I seen enough. You got to come sit on this sideline with me, D-Lo. Well, and look at the Lakers' three-point shooting the last two seasons here. The Lakers, though, they lose four of their five games on the road. They've quickly reverted back to those old habits, right? That's what J.J. Reddick is talking about. But I'm a little confused. This is a Lakers team that got off to a 3-0 and start. Are they that, or are they this bumbling road team? They're better than this team. I know you never want to judge a team when they're missing one of their best players and when they're at the end of a road trip. Right. But 
they essentially have the same roster they did a year ago and the same challenges that J.J. is now dealing with are the same challenges that Darvin Ham was dealing with. I mean, there was a time last year where Darvin Ham took D'Lo out of the starting lineup because it was hard to have him and Austin Reeves in there defensively. And, like, that's one of the things that J.J. is probably considering now because D'Lo makes it difficult when he's not hitting his outside shot. When he is hitting his outside shot, they're hard to beat, and they will have nights like that. He could have a night like that tomorrow against Philly, and they could win. But because he's inconsistent and because the roster hasn't changed, they're going to still have these struggles in the defensive end. Yeah, teams that are struggling, especially defensively, there's one thing about schematics. There's another thing about effort. When he says level of compete, that sort of means, like, are you attacking every possession the way you should? It's the point of attack, literally. And the issue with the Lakers, it's strange because they struggle in the paint, but issues in the paint start on the perimeter. Those are blow buys. Those are transition baskets that you score because you took a bad shot and now you're moving the other way and you're not set up with your defense. And so I think when I think about these Lakers, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and I give credit to Austin Reeves, they've shown up. They're trying to better their game, especially Reeves as a facilitator. I think he's like number two in, or three in assists on the squad. Outside of that, there's no consistent contributions. And I don't know what year it is for D'Lo, but at a certain point, your professionalism shows on a nightly basis. Not saying he's not a professional, but I'm just saying when you go out there defensively, you can't have lapses because you're trying to lead these guys who JJ said are trying to take developmental steps. The Dalton Connects who are entering the starting I, lineup and et cetera. But tonight, I get the professionalism side of things and yes, did uh, D-Lo D deserve to be benched? Yes, absolutely. But I had, to, in his defense, let's, let's think about this for a second. Since he's put on a Laker uniform, his name all, is always in trade talks. It is hard for a guy to lock in and focus consistently. Okay, that's fair. He had a player option. He could have opted out and been a free agent this year. And as soon as he opted in, which he did for the money because he wasn't going to get – I don't blame him. As soon as he opted in, he became a trade target. Yeah, but he, he thought that. But he thought also with a change of coach that things were going to be better. His name is still in trade talks. Right, it's hard for a guy to walk in the locker room and be able and come out and consistently be locked in and ready to play. And I know it, it's a certain level of professionalism. I get that, but I'm just saying to his defense at this. I think the the hardest thing is that when you are in trade talks, the only thing that can carry you through is by saying, you know what, you may not want me, but I'm going to show people who, who can have me in the best version of my game. And I think that's always been but that's difficult. A, that's a Texas type mentality. I well, think we the calculate. Texas. I think the calculation. <laughs> yes, you're right. right. It's always for it was this calculation for Darvin Ham. It's the calculation for JJ Redick yanking someone after their performance in the third quarter. Is that ultimately going to teach them the lesson, or is that going to lose them? And that's the question that we've seen time and time again be asked. The Lakers are going to have a chance to get back in the win column in our ESPN Friday doubleheader. LeBron and company host Paul George and the Sixers in the second game of the night. And before that, you can catch the Suns and the Mavericks. We tip it off with NBA Countdown. There's a lot to get to, so let's go coast to coast. And since we're here in Los Angeles, let's head to the Intuit Dome. That's where Paul George made his return to the Clippers. He was booed every time he touched the ball. And afterwards, he said that he did not like that one bit or really think he deserved it. What do you think, Brian? Well, the wall turned its back on him when he got announced like it was a high school game. And I think he felt like he just took the better deal, which he did. But I think some of the Clippers fans were offended by some of the stuff he said on his podcast and also the fact that when he was there for the last four years, he wasn't able to deliver, especially in the key moments. He had 18 points in the Sixers' loss. He went 7 of 9 from the field in this one. Let's stick in Golden State, though, where DeMontis Sabonis recorded his third triple-double of the season while going a perfect 6 of 6 from the field. Don't look now, but the Kings have now won 5 of their last 6. Janae, are they not like a play-in team? Look, they have to take steps forward. This is a time for them to really build between De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis, but last Last time we saw a stat like this, it was actually in the WNBA in 2016 by Neko Gumake, who went 12 for 12 from the field. Hey. I think 7 for 7 for the free throw line, zero turnovers, so cut from a good club. Okay? Shout out to Sabo. Also, Vivek sweatshirt was oh, yeah, high-level like <laughs> trolling. All right, Love from it. Sacramento to Phoenix, where KD recorded his fifth 30-point game of the season, tied for the most in the league. But check this out. The Heat had a chance to tie this game up, but they were not able to get a shot off. Perk, the Suns are now a league back 6-0 in clutch time. What's the difference this year to last? Oh, it's because of Kevin Durant, who should be the front runner in this early season for MVP. Best record in the, in the Western Conference. And guess what, Janae? What? Tied for the most 30-point games. Okay. Uh, uh, Numbers. Uh, yeah, yeah, tied with Jokic for the most clutch uh, okay. four-quarter points. Okay. And fourth in, uh, in the league in four quarters. I see you. 
Excuse yeah, me, like that. Yeah, like, yeah, that. He's voice. trying to get like me. <laughs> and our coast-to-coast today with the San Antonio Spurs as we once again check in with our Sham Sharanya. Shams, I understand you have an injury update for us coming out of San Antonio. Sources tell me that Spurs guard Devin Vassell, there is optimism that he could make his season debut on Saturday against the Utah Jazz. He's recovering from offseason foot surgery, but his season debut is imminent, could happen on Saturday night against the Utah Jazz. And we know how important he is for the Spurs, providing floor spacing around Victor Wembanyama. They're starting a five-game homestand, three and five going into tonight's game against Portland. Second leading score for the Spurs last season, last season, almost 20 points per game. And so another floor spacer and score for Wemby and Chris Paul. Yeah, the Spurs starting to get healthy. They've been struggling with that a bit this year. Sham Sharanya, thank you so very much for that update. Hey. 